What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. An interesting conversation happened on the Joe Rogan podcast yesterday. It's about uh, two minutes of it that I wanted to highlight uh, in terms of the Joe Rogan and Russell Brand's treatment by YouTube, in some cases, special treatment, which is extraordinarily frustrating as a creator who isn't exactly tiny. I get it, but I'm still just like anyone else on this platform, just, you know, I'm as close to Joe Rogan as, as any creator on this platform. Uh, you know, I'm, the guy's in his own stratosphere, but it still sucks to hear that. And also, it was interesting to hear them call out and give some free promotion to new platform alternatives, in particular, uh, Rumble and others. We all know that um, Russell Brand has an exclusive deal on Rumble. Um, and it's just good to see overall, even though some of the information Reveal was a little disappointed, and we're gonna get all that after a super quick word from this video sponsor, Sheath. Huge shout out to this video sponsor. That's right, Sheath. These boxers are designed to keep your balls off your legs. Sheath has three individual compartments to keep everything down there separate and cool and comfortable. And hey, since they've been a long time sponsor, I've heard from many of you who have tried out Sheath and really love it. They were invented by a US Army soldier who came up with the idea for Sheath during his second tour in Iraq, where it was hot as heck and his boys needed to breathe. And on top of all sorts of awesome designs for Sheath, they've added all sorts of winter items, hoodies, gator necks, and all sorts of base layers. Head on over to the link in the description and pin comment down below. Use my promo code to save and support the channel and keep everything nice, cool, and dry. I know it's probably kind of weird, fellas, to be thinking about changing up, but uh, you know they've been a strong sponsor for the channel. And I really think that if you give them a try, you like them and you've got really nothing to lose. So give Sheath a try. So now Rogan says that he had a 25% increase in revenue on videos that were previously demonetized. But after signing the deal with Spotify, YouTube suddenly decided that, oh yeah, I guess these videos are okay for ads to run on now. This is extremely frustrating. I'm gonna start with kind of the, look, I don't blame Joe personally. He probably doesn't even handle this stuff. Unlike most you know, content creators who, you know, we all scream into the void when we need help from YouTube. But it's very interesting. A 25% uh, change in revenue is a life-changing number for a lot of creators. You know, okay, if you're making $10 a month, maybe it doesn't matter. But if you're on the cusp of like, um, being able to support yourself, creating content, this, that, and the other thing, it would be everything. You know, we see, you know, in February, I took almost a 50% hit to my revenue. There's a reason I'm pushing memberships. It's not because, um, you know, I love them, but I have to create more content for members to incentivize people to sign up so that I'm less susceptible to those wild swings one way or another. Even Joe Rogan has to do these type of things. But he talked in, uh, he had mentioned this one other time before on his podcast where suddenly after the Spotify deal was announced, it was uh, remonetized. However, it says Joe Rogan's move from, move from Spotify to Spotify from YouTube was economically motivated move, in an economically motivated move. One of the biggest deals involving a podcast, Joe Rogan moved his popular show to Spotify in a huge deal and hasn't looked back since then. In a recent episode of his podcast, a 55-year-old hosted stand-up co comedian, comedian Russell Brand. The conversation between the two landed them on the topic of how different platforms worked around demonetization to curate their content. The episode saw the JRE host remembering how his revenues went up by 25% when he announced his departure from YouTube. Like, that's extremely frustrating. Essentially what's happening there, and I think what he said in an earlier call was, now maybe it was all of a sudden there was suddenly more market interest in advertising on his videos, but if YouTube demonetizes a video, I can't choose to run ads on it. Like, it doesn't work that way. Uh, many of you have seen my ads on like, you know, on Tim's videos or Daily Wire videos or all these type of things. Uh, Russell Brand hosts a show called Stay Free with Russell Brand. He was of the firm opinion that the information guidelines coming from YouTube were derived from organizations like the WHO. I agree with that. And such made him move away from YouTube to Rumble. 
I am also sure that Russell Brand got a huge check from Rumble, almost certainly. And, you know, the thing is, like, Russell is still very big on on YouTube, and his Rumble isn't, like, that awesome. I mean, it, it, he, he's got a million followers there, but his views still pale in comparison uh, to his YouTube. You know, a day ago, he talks to Tim Pool, which is like Russell Brand and Tim Pool crossover. That's pretty big. And it has 62,000 views. Um, we aren't alone. Brand new footage. This is 100,000 views. 80, he's still easily one of the largest creators on the platform. Here's when Russell Brand meets Rumble CEO in studio. 300,000 views. Um, you know, so he's, I shouldn't say he's actually doing pretty good. You have 371,000. Okay. I'm just wrong. He's doing better than I thought. Um, 75,000 views. I mean, it's still a lot less than YouTube, but it's continuing to get better. Okay. So sometimes he gets videos where it's like 50,000 views, but when they pop off, he's still getting a half a million views. And that's awesome to see. That's why, I mean, I have a, you know, a rumble channel myself, uh, and I'm working on working with, this is still a problem. It still shows users in there, but you know, I have a hundred thousand followers there and you know, I usually get, here's 2000 views, 2000, 1.5 thousand, but also these are not exclusive to rumble. So if I was doing exclusive third party, you know, videos, perhaps they might do better, but you know, I can get between two and 3000 views. And these are people that, uh, by the way, I know you're also seeing this. These are people that wouldn't normally see my video on YouTube. That's why I support alt and new tech. Odyssey, same thing. Rumble, same thing. BitChute, same thing. Between Odyssey, Rumble, and BitChute, that's about 5,000 people per video that are seeing my video here on these new tech platforms that wouldn't be seeing it otherwise. And any content creator that continues to ignore that is a fool. You know, I, I, I still... Wish I knew why people like PewDiePie and other people wouldn't just click. It takes like two clicks. It's not about the money. Here's a video I did that got 5,000 views. It's not about the money. I don't make any money on Rumble. But these are people, like with creators, I say this time and time again. If you're a creator watching this video and you don't merge your channel with Rumble, you're, you're just a fool. First of all, if you ever get banned off YouTube, you'll have a, a somewhat of a platform built up there, right? 100,000 followers I have on Rumble, and 1% of them watch my videos. But if I got banned off YouTube, all those people, that's why they go, they're like solidarity subscribes. You should be doing this. Plus, these are people that could, like for me, maybe if you're, you're on Rumble, BitChute, or Odyssey, you saw me advertise coffee brand coffee. Or in this video, I talked about Sheath. There are people that you can advertise to. Um, but what I thought was interesting in this clip, Glenn Greenwald posted, Russell Brand was on Joe Rogan's show today, and they discussed how YouTube's escalating repression is fueling Rumble's growth. They also discussed the moronic, moronic tactic of corporate media trying to demean any platform they can't control and censor as far right. Controversial, because yeah. we never, st we never yeah. change shit. But they, they do things to get people to self-censor. Of course. And I mean, I, I mean, I'm one of the biggest examples of this, right? The Koof, bad guy from WW2 hanging around by the playground, all these things. Um, I have to, it's easy for Joe Rogan who has a, a hundred, $200 million contract is a huge deal. Has people paying to listen to his podcast. Um, you know, if I had, uh, you know, 50,000 people backing me on subscribe star or something like that, I wouldn't need to worry about it, but this is just the reality of it. Rumble doesn't do that. It was difficult. Well, yeah, exactly. What was difficult for us when we were, when YouTube was our primary platform is something we would look at your content. All right, that's the title of this Rogan video. Um, this is the content. Okay, well, we can try that. And then we would get demonetized. And it yeah. becomes like a weird algebra. You change this word, you mm -hmm. change that word. You have to order it. You have there's certain things you just, you know that you can't say. Dead right. 100% right. I literally just uploaded a, uploaded a video about Jimmy Kimmel having a meltdown. And because I had two specific words in the title, um, it was getting suppressed. Now it's not doing amazing, but it's doing normal. Um, and it's because I had to remove those two words. It was about a leak. You still get some money from like YouTube red. 
Yeah. Right? You still get, but it was like th- they were doing things. And I mean, I, they are running a business. I understand it from their perspective. Of course. You know, they're running a business. They have advertisers. I understand it from their perspective. But from a content creation perspective, you just couldn't trust them. This is what uh, Rumble were fundamentally offered. They get- so, and also, it's not about the money. It's really about the reach. Because once they ding your video, why would they promote it if they're not making any money? Remember, they take 55% of the advertising revenue. So why would they promote a video that YouTube's not making any money on? So that's why it's such a big deal to me. Yes, it's about the money, but I have people that join. I've, I've, I've been pushing the join, like having people join as members, and you guys have been doing it, or my subscribe star, or my locals. And that's going to grow and grow and grow. But... I still need the video to be seen, it, you know, and, and February was extraordinarily rough for the channel. And I, I'm just, I feel like they were changing some of the algorithm. You have to constantly be on top of it. Gave me a good deal and the assurance that we're not going to censor you. Now, obviously coming from where I come from politically and in terms of my background, even as a person that's been in the public for a while, I'm like, I, I know how Rumble is being portrayed. It's being portrayed as a right wing, like, you know, far right mm-hmm. place, conspiracy theorist. Yeah, you and Glenn Greenwald, super yeah. far right. Yeah, like this <laughs> married gay Pulitzer Prize winning <laughs> journalist. Tulsi Gabbard, super right wing. Yeah, like, it's, it's nuts. It's nuts what people call it. It's just anything alternative to the censorship model they'll talk of as right wing. 100% correct. And it's interesting how the left just conceded free speech to the right, but they did. And, um, and, and ultimately, this is what you get. You know, Rumble continues to grow. Um, I, I'm still loyal to BitChute. I give BitChute every month, every month, uh, money every month, Odyssey month, every uh, money every month. I support their platforms. Rumble is probably our best alternative. But I mean, I'm not explicitly right wing. My content is more like pop culture. Now that's maybe why it doesn't go as wild on YouTube, but I'm building or on Rumble, but I'm building an audience there. And they're right; the media has portrayed Rumble as I mean, even Community Notes is on here. I think I think I put that on there. Um, <clears throat> and then yeah, you know, we look at it, we have 294 followers. We're getting views over here. You know, here's some you know 12 upvotes. You know, so this is brand. This is 41 people. Here's 203 people that watched our show on Rumble. That wouldn't have seen it any other, you know, any other way. So, you know, I, I think um, they're right that the, the smear tactics of mainstream media is really about, hey, these people don't make their content creators fall in line. Spotify certainly took a lot of heat over some of Joe Rogan's comments, and it's glad I'm glad to see that they kind of held fast on that. But it's an important thing. That's why I support alt tech. That's why I don't care about, you know. People say, this is why a lot of creators don't go there. They think, oh, I'm not going to make any money on Rumble or, and my viewers will go watch on Rumble and I won't make any money. I don't care because my viewers support me in other ways. They buy my products. They, they, so it's just an old way of thinking that needs to go by the wayside. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll talk to you again real soon.